aspect of the surface state does not depend on the detail of the chemistry, meaning the bonding, dangling bonds, and all sorts of things that you may expose by cutting open the surface. So this is, the, this is, this is its experimental manifestation that it's not a stacked generalization of the quantum spin hull or, or the quantum hull. So there, there is a new topological state uh, in 3D, and that is what is exciting. And, um, and of course, you can make a stacked generalization of quantum spin hull that would be called a weak topological insulator in 3D. And that has its own interesting properties, but the most uh, distinct and new state there is a uniquely new topological state in 3D that has no quantum Hall analog. That's why I, I like to call it the first non-quantum Hall light topological matter. I mean, this two you can connect. As I said, uh, this is two copies of Holden model put together by, by a Rashba term, and, uh, but this is, this is not that. So now, now it also, that also gives us a tremendous experimental challenge. How do we prove this state, that this state exists? Because all the technology, transport, and all of that, it came from quantum Hall effect. I mean, the, the integer quantum Hall effect was discovered experimentally. So that methodology, how to establish topological uh, character of a, just a second, of a state is, is well, experimentally, that methodology is well known and well established. You just apply, and then of course there is the fractional quantum hall, there are spin liquids, all sorts of things that are in 2D. So 3D uh, gave us a, experimentally a paradigm shift. You had to do new type of experimental measurement, bring in those tools to probe that uh, 3D state. Yes, I'll take the question now. Uh, so, uh, for each cross section, the value of the spin hall current, uh, it's the same for all uh, different cross sections? No, this, this, those, are, those depend on the, the details of the material. Let me go to the experiment. I mean, I'm just setting the introduction so that you can better follow. When we go to the detail, then, then let's uh, get to that. Yeah. I may have this one. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, that, that is, it's, it's a good catch. It should be a kind of, <laughs> but I can ensure when I show you the data, that is, that is, that is the way what the, it's correct in the data. So it's in the, uh, messed up in the cartoon. Thank you. Yeah. That will make it even more new, right? <laughs> okay. Thank you. So. It's good people are not sleeping. Okay. So now in 3D, that's not the only state. There are other topological states in 3D. And this can actually connects to my third topic of my third lecture, that uh, a metal can be topological in a different way, not through the uh, Kane, Milli, G, Z2 invariant, in some other way. In, it can be by construction topological. And so, so here is a full uh, phase diagram, if you like, of a topological band insulator uh, in 3D. We live in 3D, so that's the most general uh, dimension for us, at least for experimentalists, not so much for string theorists. But this is, this is what we care about, because this, this is where we can uh, 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 tweak and turn the knobs. So as, I, as, as you know, that in the topological insulator case, your bulk is uh, insulating, and the surface, you have a Dirac cone, and the, that surface cross-section of that Dirac cone, Fermi surface is, the, is a circle, right? And this, uh, each point is, a, so here, here we have it correct, so it maintains the same chirality, right? So then, um, uh, so now imagine, so I, I'm, I'm trying to construct the full phase diagram in 3D. Um, so now imagine closing the gap. And what, because since topological insulators come from a band inversion, the Z2 invariant is non-trivial when a band in, odd number of band inversion has happened. So that means in, uh, the bulk of the topological insulator, it's an indirect gap insulator rather than a uh, indirect gap band insulator rather than a uh, direct gap band insulator. A direct gap band insulator, at least I don't know of any that can become topological, right? So because that's because of band inversion. It's built in there. So the bulk of the topological insulator, in terms of whether it's direct gap or indirect gap, it's more like silicon than gallium arsenide. People are familiar with that, that thing. So then what happens now if I tune the, 
uh, uh, thin the band parameters or interaction there and close the gap. And uh, so then I can, I can always find a way to close the gap at two points, right? So, um, uh, so then now I have, I have a uh, gapless, uh, I have a semi-metal, excuse me. I have a semi-metal, right? The gap is just barely closed, but in the early days when I was working on this uh, review of modern physics article with Charlie, in early days, my thinking was that if I close the gap in a ZT topological insulator, surface state will localize, it will disappear. But when I started to do experiments, I had a paper in 2011 in science where I, well, I, I saw that even if you close the gap, the surface states don't disappear. The topological surface states do not disappear, and their spin texture, that uh, chiral left-handed texture, remains, even though you close the gap. So that is experimental detail, if you like. Yes? Oh, which blue line? Yeah, it is a Fermi line, yes. Fermi line, yeah. Yeah, I'm just drawing the surface for me surface. So this is the, the blue line is the surface for me surface. Okay, sure. Yeah, it, there's no bulk, bulk, bulk band is not there. Okay. okay. That's the e, like that's, so if I have these two directions in K and K, and I draw the energy band diagram, that corresponds to the energy equals E uh, intersection? Yeah, it's not at the Dirac point, it's at, uh, let me go back. So what if I take a cut here? My Fermi level is here. Then I'll get a circle, right? I'm talking about that circle. It's not at the Dirac point. It's, uh, and then I don't s see any bulk for me surface. I should not because uh, a bulk is up here. Uh, I'm cutting, a, cutting it here. So then I should see a circle. That's in the, that's in the balance band? No, no. This is inside the bulk gap, but it's above the Dirac point. It's, uh, so the surface, uh, so, so the Fermi surface is only the surface, uh, uh, surf, it's a Dirac circle, circle on the, on the Dirac cone. Let me repeat that. So this is my Dirac cone, right? What if I place my chemical potential here? So I'm not, I, I will, at the Fermi level, there will be no bulk band. I will just see a surface band, right? Uh, let me get to that. Okay, so then what I did, I closed the gap, right? So my initial thinking as an experimentalist uh, was I, uh, understand, trying to understand the theory is that the, 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 uh, the, the surface state will localize and disappear because the source of topological protection is gone. It's, the gap is now zero. There is no uh, way to uh, do that. But then, uh, Experimentally, we saw those things that they don't necessarily disappear. So this is interesting. Uh, now you can, you can call, for a different reason, I'll, I'll get to that later on. I'm, I'm just trying to give you a quick overview so that you don't get lost in the details when I get to that. Uh, I'm, I'm showing the end result ahead of time, if you like. So, so then uh, these critical points are there, but the surface states are also there. Their spin texture is also similar. So this now, these days, we call it a topological Dirac semi-metal. That uh, those points are, uh, they, they, they have, they are, they are symmetry protected. The crystal discrete uh, space group symmetry, some rotational symmetry, or some other aspect of the crystal symmetry can protect those crossings and keep the surface state. So they do not, should not necessarily disappear. Of course, uh, Charlie is right. I mean, if uh, they, are put, they are there, because of the additional symmetry, it's not because um, it's not because the time reversal. Uh, now I have uh, it's they are not protected, not necessarily protected by the time reversal. So that's the message. So they are they are because of the additional uh, space group symmetry in the crystal. Now think about breaking that space group symmetry. Then there are many possibilities. So now when we close the gap, these are Dirac points, right? So the Dirac points, uh, you have two electrons. I mean, you have two states at the Dirac point, right? A Dirac point, you can think of it as a 
pair of vial points, uh, two vial points, two vial fermions will give you a Dirac fermion. And this is the key idea that led to its experimental realization. And we take great pride that we also predicted this material, how to get vial, uh, vial fermions. So what we did, it's the same idea here, that we took this crystal, or its analogous uh, chemical, I mean the chemical analog, and then we figured how to make the crystal asymmetric, break that crystal symmetry, make it uh, 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 break the inversion symmetry. So breaking the inversion symmetry would mean that now it's not the Dirac point, that it will lose that, that degeneracy is lifted. And since this was protected, topologically protected, now when the degeneracy is lifted, you, are, you, uh, you, you have fractionalized the electron in some sense, in the, in the sense that now, uh, now elect the two vial points are, uh, are manifest. They, 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 they are now isolated. They, they, of course, uh, they are uh, monopole and anti-monopole in, in, in momentum space. So now they are split. Now, since they, they were connected by the Fermi surface, now the Fermi surface has also fractionalized because unless you connect them, you'll, you'll run into all problems with quantum mechanics, right? So uh, quantum mechanics is making sure that you have a Fermi arc there. So, so this, is, this is what I, in the earlier slide, I called it a Fermi arc metal that you have a fractionalized in some way. So now you could uh, recombine these vial points by uh, changing the symmetry of the crystal in some other direction, in other way. And then you can go back to the critical point if you combine this to restore that symmetry. And then uh, once you are, you, if you combine this way, you'll get to a trivial insulator. And all of that, this cartoon I'm showing, it basically summarizes, it also gives a materials algorithm, at least to us, uh, this is how we discovered this thing, that where to find them in nature and how to uh, form the complete phase diagram of the topological state of matter uh, that relates to the topological band theory. So, so trivial insulator or block insulator uh, with uh, trivial topological invariance. Then, uh, so, so one way to describe these states would be uh, this is my favorite way of doing that. I, I, uh, we recently published a paper in Nature Communication where I, we called it uh, a vile semi-metal. It's like you, you take a top 3D topological insulator, cut it into half, but you need a knife in, to work in momentum space, right? So if you have a momentum space knife, then uh, half of a 3D topological insulator is a vile semi-metal. Yeah. Yes. Your, your bulk phase and the vacuum, so the trivial insulator. Right. What would you see if you got the same bulk phase, but you looked at the insulator between this and, say, a topological insulator or one of the other um, phases? Yeah, I mean, of course, uh, whether uh, at the inter, of course, I mean, all of these, we're calling it surface state, but they're really interface state with vacuum, right? So, yeah. uh, so you could, uh, s uh, you could uh, stack a, uh, another material with same topological invariant but totally different chemical composition, then that, that surface state will disappear. I mean, you, uh, so as long as at the interface there is a topological uh, mismatch, invariant uh, discontinuity, you'll get a trapped fermion there, right? So uh, those experiments, we have, we have done some of that experiment. We're there, they are underway. So we could show that at the interface, then you, instead of a single Dirac fermion, the interface chemistry uh, knows all, the, all of that re remarkably, it, uh, somehow it creates a double fermion there. So then you are not protected. Yeah, it, it's really cool. Chemistry knows all this topology. Yeah. I think somebody asked this question before, but that last one might um, answer it. Uh, so you're actually, these uh, six squares with yeah. pictures in them, you're considering two topological insulators and you're looking at the states at the interface? Is that what this is? Yeah, yeah, I mean this is, this, this, this each is giving us the interface, yes. So, because individually there's, there's, there's no gap. I mean there's, there's a gap, so I'm just going to get this blank. Yeah, so, so you, you'll, you'll get a gap in the bulk, but gotcha. uh, your Fermi level, I'm keeping Fermi level always inside the bulk gap, so I can, I can monitor whether I get a surface state or not. I see, and yeah, and you know it's a surface state because by yeah. yeah, yes, precisely. Yeah, in the bulk there gap. And, yeah, go ahead, yeah. Um, and so now, now maybe, now this question is, and now I can maybe ask this, so what's this transition going on? Like, what are you doing? Uh, what 
Yeah, so that's, that's the story, that's the experimental story, how we drive these transitions. Yeah? Yeah. Well, we, uh, let me answer you ahead of time by tuning spin orbit coupling and removing the band inversion. You can drive a topological uh, transition, and that is the experimental story. Uh, there was another question there. Yeah, so my question is that this gap is in momentum space, right? It's not an energy gap. So Which gap in momentum space? So the one centimeter, the gap that is showing between the Fermi arcs, right? That is in momentum space? Yeah, yeah, that is momentum space, yeah. Okay. So, so but... Yeah. Now, so in, 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 the, in, the, in the real space, of course, the Fermi arc, it cannot just uh, uh, abruptly terminate somewhere. That will again violate quantum mechanics, right? So, you, so they're interconnect, they're, they are connected. That's why vile semi-metal is a metal. You, you need a metallic channel for the electron to complete the loop. So at that point, when the momenta, um, uh, momenta of the electron is approaching that point where the arc terminates on the surface, at that point it's also degenerate with the bulk. So then it, it can take a dive into the bulk and then make it. Uh, so, so the, the, the 3D, uh, considering momentum and uh, real space, all everything together, uh, I can reassure that there is a closed loop. I mean, it's yeah. not, I mean, the energy surface can still be continuous, right? Yeah. So there is no gap in energy. Yeah, no, there is no gap in energy. There is no gap in energy, ni I, neither in surface or nor in the bulk. Yeah. Um, so let's get a topological insulator. I mean, the previous slide, I can think of the first, like, you have this idea of a direct point cut such that I can assign on the surface. But isn't that, like, the formula is not something I can choose using just your point? Because you have to Yes, you can do that by doping or gating, I mean, uh, or surface gating, chemical gating. Yeah, I mean, those are experimental details, yeah. yeah. You have to close the gap. You have to close the topological insulator gap in some clever way. In one way, if you close, you will get trivial insulator. So, so let's, let's wait for the story to unfold. I, I, I wanted to give an overview so you're not lost globally. OK. So, so now, now, now the story begins here. So as I said, the, the experimental story. So I just gave you a conceptual overview. The experimental story is that the, First 2D topological insulator is the integer quantum Hall effect. It breaks time reversal, but it's still a 2D topological insulator. And its topological character was uh, uh, identified by David Thales and collaborators. And I mean, of course, uh, he did not use the word Chan number or Berry phase, but Berry's paper is also around the same time. So Thales and Berry sort of laid the early foundation for topological band theory. And all the later theoretical development is uh, is these are really foundational papers. And that was inspired by experiments uh, of uh, von Klitzing uh, observation of uh, integer quantum Hall effect. So in transport, you see this uh, uh, quantization, these steps. And, and then now, as I said, that you can play with churn numbers and, and, and think of uh, churn parity uh, in the case of new type of topological, recent spin or I should call it spin orbit topological insulator. This is with a magnetic field. Uh, and then as I said, that in the 3D, you have, uh, it's described by four invariant as Charlie has covered. It's not three. If you would be, a, it would be a, a regular stacking of 2D, then you would get that th uh, three uh, invariant would be enough. But in this case, there is a fourth invariant and that uh, that is critical, and this uh, invariant is, is, is giving you that new state. Uh, so then, uh, so these are Z2, so 2 to the uh, 4 gives you 16 topological types, different types of topological insulators in 3D, and uh, uh, when all the invariants are zeros, uh, trivial, then you get this, get silicon or gallium arsenide, right? So, but then uh, these invariants can be there can be one zero 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 or one one one, uh, all sorts of combinations of uh, invariants. Okay, so uh, so in other words, uh, there are at least fifteen in three D. Uh, I mean, in general, three uh, D is the maximum dimension we apparently live in. At least experimentalists live in. So there are fifteen topological insulators. So how do you find them? That is the challenge uh, we are facing. 
And not only you, when you claim that I found it a biological insulator, why should your colleague believe you? Or why should the community believe you? Or why should theorists uh, working on topological band theory